Yes, no, there. Um, so before I sing, um, I just in the middle, um, Bill and Nancy Hall are going to help me out. So um, they're two of my special people. So um, here we go. Starlight shines, the night is still. Shepherds watching from a hill. Close my eyes, see the night when love was born. A perfect child gently waits. Mother bends to see God's face. Close my eyes, see the night when love was born. Angels fill the midnight sky. They see. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Love come down for you and me. Heaven's gift, the holy spark, to light the way inside our hearts. Bethlehem, your small door, came the hope. was changed forevermore when love was born. I close my eyes and see the night when love was born. greatest of these. Merry Christmas.
hatred of God and God. Oh, come to the cradle in Bethlehem's dark and see what has happened this holiest of nights. Come bring the Lord gift from the We have watched, we have waited in hope. For peace. Enjoy. With love. Now our redemption draws near. Hear the word of the Lord from our Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. 
The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia. Amen. Merry Christmas and welcome to this service uh, this evening. So glad to see you out and uh, it's a really my pleasure to be with you. Let us worship God.
gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first res registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the, the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our carol is, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1 and 3 in the hymnal 173.
it's time, let us continue our worship of God by presenting this evening's offering. Let us pray. Lord, on this night when we celebrate the greatest gift anyone could ever receive, the gift of life from your heart to our hearts through the life of your son whose life was laid down as a gift. And so we bring these gifts, Lord, as a token response. We know there's much more responding that we can and should do but we pray that you will receive these gifts tonight. Use them to spread the love of Christ wherever they go. Fill them with the power of your spirit to touch a heart, touch a life, and bring glory to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
pretty hard to keep your seat, isn't it? Just want to get up and dance around. <laughs> Thank you. And the book of Hebrews tells us to always show hospitality to strangers, for you may be entertaining angels without knowing it. Chapter 13, verse 1. Have you ever seen an angel? I think I have on at least two occasions. There may have been more, of which I was just unaware, still am, but these two stand out in my mind. And obviously I can't prove I encountered angels, but let me share a couple of short stories with you and you see what you think. I was with a tour group from a neighboring Presbyterian church on a trip to Israel. And the pastor arranged for us to celebrate Holy Communion in the traditional site of the upper room where Jesus shared the Last Supper with his disciples. I have a friend who was a little disillusioned when he saw the cornerstone, said 1953, but <laughs> we, had, we had our matzah and we had our little carved olive wood cups and some real wine to the ready. And I noticed a man, a lone individual, standing nearby and looking on. I went to him and asked him if he would like to share the sacrament with us. And I don't even think he spoke English, but somehow he got the message and he said, yes, yes, he'd like to do that. And so we had this solemn sharing of Holy Communion, the, the sacrament that Jesus instituted so long ago, we were all moved and blessed and gratified. And when I looked around, the man was gone. But I had a, a strong sense from the Holy Spirit that the Lord was well pleased by our hospitality. He may just have been an angel sent to test our piety or I think more likely to sharpen our awareness of God's presence there in the Holy Land. In that moment remains for me one of the high points of the trip. That was back in 1985, I think. And I still remember it. And it touches me. The second story, a little is much more recent, last summer, a man that I went to seminary with learned to pray with this guy. He, he lives in Colorado, and he invited us to come see him. And so finally, he'd been asking me for years, and finally we said, yes, we're coming. So we packed our bags and we headed for the Philadelphia airport. And our flight was delayed, surprise, because President Biden was in town, and we had to wait for Air Force One to take off with all the, uh, I don't know why they have those cars that chase the plane, you know, those black cars fill up Secret Service. Anyway, we had to wait. And uh, then we taxied out, long taxis, hot in the plane, and then the, the pilot came on and said, well, because there are storms in our flight path, we're going to have to loop around over Texas and come in from a different direction. And because of that, we're going to have to taxi all the way back and get more fuel because we don't have enough to do this. And so we did that. At last, cleared for takeoff, off we flew. And finally, tired and weary, we arrived in Denver much later than we planned. We trundled off the plane and forgetting, of course you forget to say, where's the bag coming in? But I thought I heard someone say carousel C. And so we had to take a train to carousel C. We descended the stairs into this large room where the trains pulled in. And there were A trains. B trains, but no C trains. The C train, the, the, the depot was under construction, and the C train wasn't running. So there in that large empty space, I mean, I don't know where everybody, everybody just carried their stuff on and left the airport, but there were standing just me, Gene, and there was this tall stranger just standing there, just the three of us, and so finally, I didn't know what to do, so I said, excuse me, um, how do you get to baggage claim C? 
Oh, he said, well, you have to take the B train, then get off and transfer to, et cetera, et cetera. And I started to glaze over, you know. I, I felt like this little kid lost. Where's my mom? And he could see I was totally bewildered. So he said, come on, I'll show you the way. So we hop on the B train. And I just happened, we, we're Gene's sitting, and, and he and I are standing, holding on the pole, and the train's rocking and rolling, and, and I saw he was wearing a cross. So I said, are you a believer? He said, yeah, are you? And I said, I'm a retired pastor, which doesn't guarantee you're a believer, but I, I like to think I am. And so we, we had this several minutes of just sharing our faith and having fellowship there as, as the train swayed and wobbled down the tracks. And then the train stopped. And we got out, and he got out with us. And though it was obviously not his destination, he led us to Carousel C, walked off and was gone. I think he was an angel. If not, he was at least doing angelic work to, to guide and bless us. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14 asks rhetorically, are not all angels spirits in the divine service sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Yes, I, I believe they are. Yes, I believe that. So there's my two stories. You know what I think. What do you think? You think you're nuts. Who, who let you in here? Well, I was asked. But, but there's more. Eugene Peterson has written a masterful book. Uh, really, it's a meditation on the book of Revelation called Reverse Thunder. And um, he, he, note, he notes that the Bible presents angels in two different ways. There are the almost pedestrian, non-flamboyant appearances of angels in human disguise, which we must have keen discernment to even recognize. In Peterson's words, angels have a penchant for appearing incognito. If we ever do see an angel, we will not know it at the time. And you just look like your neighbor. Angels also appear in dreams. I'm so impressed. I've been thinking about Joseph this year quite a bit. And I, I read somewhere just about a week ago, did you ever notice that not, none of Joseph's words are recorded in the Bible? Not one. Not good morning, how you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing from Joseph. But he, he has this dream, and the, and the angel shows up. And, and he took Mary as his wife because the angel said, don't be afraid, do it even though the explanation of her pregnancy was highly unusual, to say the least. And, and soon after Jesus was born, Joseph was directed by an angel in a dream, take the child and go to Egypt. He's in danger. Get out of here. So he did. And then after a while, another angel comes to his dream and says, it's okay to go home. So he goes back, but he doesn't want to get too close to the trouble, so he moves to Nazareth, and that's how... He became Jesus of Nazareth. That's, you know, angels involved. It, it really takes faith to apprehend angels and their ministry on our behalf. And a lot of times we just don't even know they're doing it. So then there are the kind of angels that appear in our Christmas story to the shepherd boys out in the field. Angels that were gloriously transcendent and magnificent to direct the people to Christ at his nativity. Well, let's consider them for a moment on this holy night. Listen to a few more words from Reverse Thunder. Peterson writes this. John's apocalyptic angels are not the plump darlings of the Reuben's oils or the giggling tinsel-fringed girls in our Christmas plays, but real angels, apocalyptic angels, vast, fiery, sea-striding creatures with hell in their nostrils and heaven in their eyes. Angels are a biblical means for representing the invisible. 
Try to imagine, if you will, just for a moment, what it was like to be those young boys keeping watch over their flocks by night. Nothing much going on, and most nights nothing did go on. Out there in the dark, stars up above, campfire glowing, the biggest threat they might face would be maybe some wild animal, a predator, trying to make off with a lamb. Now, well, they were ready for that. An ordinary night at work. No surprises expected. To be a shepherd was to work at the bottom rung of the labor force. How could they ever expect to come under the midnight assault of God's angelic choir singing glory at the top of their lungs? How do you ever get ready for that? There was nothing incognito about that appearance. It was earth-shattering and reality-reshaping in those intense minutes of divine revelation. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I hope that if it were me or you, if us, we were out there together watching lambs and sheep, if, if we were out there in the darkness, say, you know, to go camping, and we were invaded by some heavenly light, that we would have run like they did. Let's go see. Maybe that's why some of us forsook the Eagles-Cowboys game tonight. Maybe on Christmas Eve we still have enough childlike faith to come seeking some of that nighttime gladness and glory. Who knows? We never know when God will choose to show up bearing gracious gifts of love and divine presence. Oh, holy night. So in our well-known story of Christmas night, we find a small group of young shepherd boys nestled in the midst of God's much larger story of salvation situated in the story arc between a shepherd boy who became a king and a great king who became a shepherd. In the Old Testament, we have the lengthy story of David, the shepherd boy, who became a great warrior, and then Israel's great king. David fought lions, bears, the giant Goliath, he fled from the jealous and maniacal King Saul. He sang songs both of lamentation and extravagant praise. He danced ecstatically before the Ark of the Covenant. He sinned great sins and received abundant grace and forgiveness. And yes, he took his place, the prominent place, on the family tree of the Messiah, Jesus son of David. On the other side of the story, we find Jesus, the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep, as all shepherds worth their salt would do. Jesus, born a king, grew up to be a shepherd. He was not ashamed to work on the lowest rung of the workforce. Jesus would do slave labor, Washing feet was slave labor. He washed the feet of those disciples who were destined to bow down and worship him as their Lord. Jesus, the good shepherd, most at home among outcasts, the lowly, the sick who needed healing, and the sinners who needed saving mercy and grace. Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep. We cast all our cares upon him because we're convinced that he cares for us no matter what the cost, no matter what. So I find it, I don't know, aesthetically very pleasing that God, the greatest storyteller of all, placed shepherd boys in the heart of the story of Christmas night. Isn't that sweet? Shepherd boys. I mean, the angels could have appeared to anyone. They could have marched into Herod's palace and blown his mind for him, but they didn't. They, 
They, they could have gone anywhere they wanted to do, but what they chose to do, what God chose to send them to, light in the darkness, out in the field, where just a few young boys were there to see it and respond. God really likes to start with small things, you know? And even now tonight, that light shines in the darkness, in the evil, demonic darkness that threatens to engulf the whole world in every generation, including our own. God's light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. O oh Lord, send your zeal into our world. Tonight, I know in just a few hours, some of you are going to be in, in a maelstrom, you know, in your living room or by the tree, and there's going to be wrapping paper being torn and ripped apart to reveal the gifts inside. And, and then and before, tonight, before the torpor sets in, after we've eaten too much, you know, we've had such a great feast, we've celebrated the birth, here, before all that, in the silent night. May the zeal of the Lord of hosts be kindled in us and rise up to meet the love of God that has descended to meet us where we live. Our God is mighty to save. We're the savees. <laughs> We're it. We're the apple of his eye. Did you know that? This is my beloved son, in him I am well pleased. Well, you're my beloved son too, and you're my beloved daughter. I'm well pleased in you because you love me and you confess me and you have faith in me and you trust me. Listen. Listen. Do you hear what I hear? A child, a child. Crying in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. May the joyous music of praise for our salvation rise up and mingle with the triumphant anthems of the choirs of angels. Those angels didn't stop singing after they left the shepherds. They're still singing. And our music just rises up and mingles, just as our prayers rise up and mingle with the prayers of all the saints who've gone before us. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Our carol is 171. Hark the herald angels sing. Please stand.
Please be seated. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he also said, you are the light of the world. And he said, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel, under a basket, so it can't be seen. You light a light so that you can see where you are, what you're doing, get oriented. And I think it's really quite amazing that, um, you know, I, our lives get covered with bushel baskets pretty, I mean, we're just overwhelmed in the world. You got kids to raise and taxes to pay and a job to do and house to clean and laundry that never ends. And, you know, it just on and on and on just piles on. And, and sometimes it's hard to see the light. 
And that's one of the things I love about this moment on a, on a Christmas Eve. We just, as God's people, people are doing it all over in all kinds of churches. We're lighting a candle. And what I think we're doing when we light this candle, we're remembering that the light of the world, when he shone his light on us, a great privilege and responsibility also came to us to light the light, to let it shine. That little song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It's a reminder tonight. If your light's gone out, if you've hidden it, if it's just been overwhelmed by the clutter of the world, this is a moment to say, Lord, I'm going to turn my light back on. I'm going to uncover it. doesn't have to be a great thing that you do with that light might just be a lonely person that needs you to smile. Could be all kinds of things, big or little. But when you, when you turn this on just now, could you just ask the Lord to show you your light, to renew your sense of what's going on. He's put his Holy Spirit to live inside of you and me. And that light deserves shine. Please light your lamps. Let us sing Joy to the World, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this night and forevermore. And God's people sing the Hallelujah Chorus. Christmas, and thanks for coming. God bless you.